Hello everybody, in this quick video I'm going to introduce you new players to the weapons that are really built for early game Northwind. They're very easy to acquire and replace, and they do their job pretty well. In fact, a lot of older players and people at the late and end game use these weapons a lot just because they're so affordable and good at what they do. So, to start off with, we're going to talk about hunting, because the best weapons for combat aren't necessarily the best weapons for hunting. Now, the best hunting weapon, hands down, is the longbow, because it's the highest damaging bow, and you can get your arrows back. When you shoot an arrow at an animal and you kill it, you can go and take the arrows off of the corpse of the animal. So if you hit C, you're opening this colonist crafting menu here, and the longbow is down here. Now, if you are a brand new player and you can't actually craft it, right, you don't have the profession, you'll have to go to woodworking, as you see here. You'll need apprentice woodworking first. So get apprentice woodworking by doing some of these other crafts, and then you'll be able to make the longbow. But once you do, right, once you can make your longbow, you just, you need these items. It's very simple. And now the next part of this, obviously, is the ammo type, because the longbow is important, but the ammo type you shoot out of it is also just as important. And I recommend metal arrows. They're a little bit pricey, but you don't lose them because you get them back after you launch them out of your bow. So they are worth it, for sure. Don't go using fire arrows or stone arrows. Fire arrows don't actually set animals on fire, so they're pointless. And stone arrows don't do nearly as much damage as metal ones. So I strongly recommend buying metal arrows from this shop and then making yourself a longbow in this crafting menu. Also, one last quick thing about hunting. It turns out, for some reason, animals are less likely to run off from you if you shoot them with an arrow than if you hit them with a gun. Like, if you hit them with a gun, they always run off. But occasionally, when you hit them with an arrow, they stay in the same place. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's intentional. Whatever that is, just keep it in mind, it's easier to hunt with a bow, and you keep your ammo because it's got arrows. So now we're going to discuss the best weapons for PvP when you're a new player. I'm going to come over here. This is all on the island of Bayable. Uh, most islands have these uh, stores in different locations, obviously. But most islands do have these kind of stores. And we're come over here. And funny enough, the weapons I recommend are right out in the open. So this is the Charleston musket. This is the go-to starter colonist musket. This is the blunderbuss which is what I recommend as a new player for close quarters engagements. It's very deadly. And this is the Sharp Pistol. This is the cute little pea shooter that all colonists get as their go-to secondary up until Prussian Cavalry Pistols become an option. Or, sorry, Holstein Pistols. Now, what I like about these guns and why they're so good for new players is they're cheap as hell. You see the Sharp Pistol here, 10 pounds. Very, very cheap. They're amassable. You can store several in your bank if you've got extras. Charleston Musket, 20 pounds, very cheap. Even the Blunderbuss is 40 pounds, but that's not that much money. You can very quickly knock out 40 pounds once you've got your contract and stuff done. I actually go over how to make money as a new player in a different video, and with that method, you'll make enough for these in no time. Also, you can buy lead balls here, very useful. You don't have to get them with lead ore and all that nonsense. You can just come and buy them from the shop. And if you want... A little edge in melee combat, you can put a bayonet on your Charleston musket. You can buy the bayonet right here. So everything is in this area. This is a great little one-stop shop when it comes to arming yourself on Northland. But now for melees, this is a bit more subjective. Guns are subjective too, don't get me wrong, but melees, <laughs> even more so. And you've got some options when it comes to new player melees, but there are some I'd recommend, okay? Uh, the Boarding Axe and... where'd it go? Sorry, the Boarding Axe and the Cutlass are the two I recommend as far as new player melee sold here. You can go for the Bayonet and the Boarding Pike, but the Boarding Pike is really bad, and the Bayonet has a real learning curve to it, whereas the Cutlass and Boarding Axe are both pretty cut and dry. Uh, it's not to say that they're not complicated to master, but it's pretty easy for a new player to get a hang of these two weapons. The Cutlass is pretty much a jack-of-all-trades, and it's basically a saber reskin. And the Boarding Axe just does a ton of damage. And so these are two good weapons for new players starting out to learn on. Alternatively, you can hit C again, opening your crafting menu, and you can make a stone hatchet, 
Way to go. Or a stone spear. These two are both pretty good. They're very spammable. And what's so nice about the stone hatchet and stone spear is they're even easier to replace than the weapons right here. Because these weapons are easy to replace, don't get me wrong. But these ones... Go away. But these ones... These cost even less than those do, and you're not even paying pounds for this. You're just getting the resources. And so I love the stone hatchet and the stone spear, but if you're not really into those fast, spammy weapons and you want something that hits a little harder, that's where these weapons come in. The boarding pike is terrible. I don't recommend using it. It's really slow and awful. The boarding axe and the cutlass, though, these are good ones. Cutlass is a great loan in melee, and the boarding axe just does a lot of damage, even as a new player, you know? Boarding axes are used even in the late game, so... This is a good one. I recommend it thoroughly. And then the last weapon I want to discuss, the Blunderbuss. This is like pretty much your go-to for extreme close quarters situations. If you're mining, if you're doing something, you're worried about getting like camped on. Like anytime you're worried about uh, like a player better than you, like camping you or nabbing you in some cave somewhere, which does totally happen. I recommend bringing a blunderbuss because these things do 150 damage, okay? All five pellets, which you, you load five lead balls into it, all five, they do th <clears throat> they do 30, and so that's totaling 150 damage. The Charlie does 60, the, uh, sorry, the shot pistol does 50, but the blunder does 150, okay? The blunder obviously doesn't work beyond close range because it's a shotgun, but it's incredibly viable at close quarters, and, uh, they're great. <laughs> I'd be using a blunder a lot more if I didn't have the Tanagashima, which is this gun here. So I thoroughly recommend the blunderbuss if you're a new player and you're afraid of getting ganked in a mine. Uh, now one more thing I do want to touch on. It's very, very important that if you're going into uh, like an active combat scenario, if you're going to a place where there's a lot of people fighting, it's very important that you've got a primary, a secondary, and a melee. It doesn't matter a whole ton which they are, but it matters a lot that you have them in the first place, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, weapon choices do obviously matter, but it matters a lot more that you have them in the first place. Because if I've got a primary in a melee, and I'm fighting someone with a primary and a secondary in a melee, once I fire my gun and they fire their gun, they've got a second shot, and they basically control the entire melee engagement at that point. And so it's it's very important you've got a secondary, a primary, and a melee, okay? All three. Even if they're cheap as hell. Even if they cost like 20, 10, and 10, or 20, 20, or sorry, 20, 10, and like nothing if using a stone hatchet, or etc. Okay? Even if they're cheap bomb the barrel shit, you do want a primary, secondary melee going into a combat scenario. And that's just about all I've got for you today. Ugh. Brief TLDR, use a longbow with metal arrows for hunting, and when it comes to PvP, buy one of these three, or the Cutlass, or the Boarding Axe, which is sold in here, restock your lead balls here, and make stone hatchets and spears if you don't want to buy the melee. That's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something.